So we're just getting ready to put the uh, intake and exhaust on. Uh, we're just getting a couple started so the gasket gets held there and so the manifolds stay up. And then we'll uh, throw the new intake, lower intake manifold on that we had to get because the old one was cracked as I showed in the previous video. So we have to put a plug in the intake because uh, it's made for whatever, it's made for two different vehicles or something. It's got a port that we don't use on our original intake. It was cast shut. It was never even drilled and tapped. So we just have a pipe plug that we're putting some Teflon tape on and then we're just going to put it right in the intake. I'll show you where it goes. So here's the intake and you can see we're just going to stick the plug in there. Problem solved. You want to put some sort of sealant on it, whether it's Teflon tape or RTV or whatever, just because you want to cause an air leak, which is why this motor uh, had issues to begin with. So we'll just thread her on in there and it's a pipe plug, so be careful how tight you tighten it because they, they're tapered. So the tighter you go, the bigger it gets. All right, so we've already put in the lower bolts because it just kind of sits in those and then it, it tightens the intake and exhaust at the same time. So it's an open slot. Uh, the only bolts that actually have holes for the intake are the very front and the very back. You can see right there how they're split. That's how, that's how all the lowers are. So it actually makes it fairly easy to uh, get the intake in place. Uh, pretty sweet design actually. You gotta give it to Ford on that one. Alright, so after fighting a long time with the exhaust and intake, lower intake manifold, it's time to put the push rods in. So the motor is going back together a little further. They also recommend that you put these back in the same spot you got them from. Um, I don't really think it's necessary, but we, we generally do try to. We have a block of wood there that we mark, um, you know, where they're at. And you also want to make sure there's a little ball on each end. You want to make sure when you put the lower one goes into the lifter itself and make sure it's seated into the lifter. Otherwise, uh, you'll have big problems later. Next step is the rocker arms are going to go back on, or the rockers. And they just go on and get bolted down. There's a torque spec for them in this scenario. Some of the older motors had uh, where you just have you have to adjust the valve lash. These are non-adjustable, so they get torqued down 17 to 23 foot-pounds, I think it is. And give them time to bleed off. Oh yeah, you also have to let them bleed down because they're hydraulic lifters, so there's oil in them, and they actually uh, pump up and fill with oil. And what that does is create a cushion so you don't hear it on the inside. Uh, of the vehicle, they're real quiet, but you have to let them bleed down, otherwise if you tighten them too fast, you take a chance of hurting a lifter, bending a push rod, or something of those sorts happening. Alright guys, so you just want to go ahead and put a little pressure on them, just snug them up and put a little ratchet on them, that way they can start to bleed out, the lifter can start to bleed out, and then after that, once you have that all squared away, you can give her a good old torque and she'll be set. Alright guys, so for those of you who've never seen an engine work, this is how an engine works. Um, Wayne is down below turning the crank pulley with a ratchet, which is awesome because before we could do it by hand. That's how little compression the motor had. Um, so now we actually have to, you know, there's no, not even any plugs in it. Um, but So basically your cam's rotating. So it's pushing the lifter up, which is pushing the push rod up, which is pushing your valve down, and in sequence is letting air in with fuel and also exhaust out on your other valve. So pretty neat if you guys never saw this before. Uh, also we're trying to build up a little bit of oil pressure um, so we can see what's going on, make sure everything is good. Also. Uh, if there's any problem with the motor or assembly or anything of those sorts, uh, we can see it now instead of having a starter crank it over and bend something. Alright, so we're going to do 20 foot-pounds on them, torque them down, and we're moving right along on this thing. Alright, so we're doing final assembly here. We're getting a little bit closer 
since you've seen it, I think the only thing we've really done was put the fuel injector rail in the new intake because it was still in the old intake, the lower section. So now we're just cleaning up the valve cover surface and that's ready to go on because we can't put the upper intake on until we put the valve cover on because it goes over top of it and we have to run our vacuum lines and a bunch of vacuum lines go to the intake we're replacing most of the vacuum lines so we want to have everything together so we can just run everything one time and then you know be done with it and make it a lot easier so basically just cleaning it up right now and getting ready to put the valve cover on all right so he's just laying out the valve cover gasket on the head uh, it's actually got ridges on the side so it holds and stays in place once you put it on there and do yourselves a favor, if you have an option to get a rubber Permadry type gasket from Felpro or whoever, just get that. Don't mess around with cork gaskets. Uh, almost everything nowadays uh, they make the rubber gaskets for. Uh, the cork gaskets are just a hassle. They never really seal. And then when you get into valve covers like this that are the old stamped, uh, stamped steel style, it's just, you get... You get holes that are bent and you try to straighten them. It's just a hassle. Just just get yourself a rubber gasket and you won't have to do the job again for a very long time. Also, older motors had like spreader bars and stuff like that because they tried to spread the pressure out on the quart gasket. Uh, it's just, just a pain. So you just want to wipe down your surfaces. If you have a wizard wheel, you can hit your surfaces with that. But just wipe it down with brake clean. Uh, make sure there's no old gasket material. Thankfully, this has already been changed at least once, so it already had a rubber gasket on it. So all we had to do was give her a good old wipe down, and she's ready to go back on. So this engine has air in the head. It's for the emissions crap. So we're going to throw that on real quick while it's all easy to get to um, before we throw the upper intake on. All right, so we're back on the F-150 again. I think where we left last was we were getting the... Um, air tube things in the head so they're in and they were not fun he's putting the intake top of the intake on now and he snuck the EGR tube in while everything was still loose uh, the valve covers back on obviously which I don't think was in the other video um, but basically we're just getting everything bolted back together nothing major happening uh, and then after this we're gonna tackle the vacuum lines and I don't know if, how much I'm going to show you of that because all that really is is taking one end off, oh, replacing it, and putting it back together. There's a diagram under the hood that you guys can follow. Fords are a pain for freaking vacuum line crap. So uh, I think maybe next time I show you guys we'll be trying to fire up. Alright guys, so we're getting ready to fire up this F-150 first time. Finally got it all back together. Fuel pump's running, so we're good there. Alright guys, so that was the first fire up. No BS, that's the first time we hit the key. Uh, we don't... We don't mess around for the cameras. You guys see what you see, what really happens. So she fired up that quick. We, of course, made sure that it had a fuel pressure at the rail. They were disconnected. So the tank, you know, it all drained back to the tank. So we ran it a couple times to get the fuel system primed up. Uh, you did hear a loud ticking. Uh, that was from the lifter being collapsed. The lifters got collapsed. Uh, I don't know if I showed it. But the old, I'll show the old head. There's some issues with it. Um, but the valve is, was sunk down really far in the head, which pushed the rocker up further, which pushed the push rod down and pushed the lifter down. So it was already, it was already lower than it should have been uh, because of the old head the way it was, if that makes sense. The valve is higher, so the rocker is pitched more back, so it's putting pressure on the, the push rod. Uh, which is putting pressure on the lifter so it wasn't full it wasn't ever really fully pumped up per se um, because it it couldn't uh, it would have it would have kept the valve open at that point it's smoky in here it probably looks like I'm looks like I just smoked a doobie or something my eyes are watering pretty bad um, 
But that's it guys. Like I said, do your prep work, do everything the way you're supposed to do it, and you won't have a problem at all, and it'll come out great, and truck's ready to go. We just gotta do, we gotta obviously do some things, check the oil again, uh, we'll check the coolant again, cause we gotta bleed that, we didn't do that yet. Like I said guys, first time we fired it up is when you saw it. So we gotta run it a couple cycles, uh, get uh, everything to, uh, you know, work properly, uh, get it up to operating temperature, and make sure that there's enough coolant in it. Um, and then she should be ready to go. All right guys, so here you can hear it. The lifter noise went away. Finally got enough oil pressure, pumped them all up. Uh, it's running great. Everything's looking good. All right, everyone wave. Bye-bye, she's done. Bye-bye, Ford.